Wednesday, January 8th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. With all the geopolitical events going on right now, all the instability, the prospects of even more uh, mayhem out there, uh, I'm going to look at uh, the fundamental and technical reasons of why gold is doing well, not the short-term noise, not all the headlines that we see um, in the mainstream media. And I'm not going to cover what's going on geopolitically uh, because it's all over the news and all of you probably know already. I'm not going to waste my time doing it. Um, so uh, before I start uh, looking into gold, a technical picture especially, and uh, how I'll uh, try to uh, show you that uh, what happened from 1980 to 2000 is not happening again to gold. Uh, I'm going to look at the markets and see wh where they are this morning. It's been a very, very volatile uh, overnight market. Uh, one of the reasons I do my videos in the morning, uh, London time, I've told uh, many, many of you in the past, for some of you who are new to the channel, uh, it's because when I worked in the city of London, as a futures and options uh, salesperson or broker, I used to get to the office very early, 7 a.m. Uh, that's when really a lot of the traders and brokers get into the city. Uh, when the markets open uh, in the continent uh, at 8 a.m. there, so we need to be on the uh, at the at our desks at 7. But I had a few uh, clients that were U.S. based. And they used to come in very early as well, around uh, midday London or 7 a.m. New York. And they wanted to know what was going on in Europe uh, and London. It was important to them. And it's one of the reasons why I do this uh, morning update. So right now it's 8 a.m. London, 3 a.m. New York time. We've had a, a wild ride overnight. For example, uh, the Dow was down as much as... a about 450 points at 28,120. Right now is at 28,454, down 120. Gold got up to 1,611.73. Uh, right now it's at 1588, still up $14 or just under a percent. We broke through, uh, of course, the recent high at just below 1590, went through 1600. A lot of volatility. Silver got up to 1887. Uh, right now it's down from that level, still up about 11 cents uh, overnight at 1851. So, why have markets come back? Well, uh, there are some uh, tweets out there by uh, President Trump. Uh, he's saying that uh, all is well after the um, missile attacks by Iran on uh, U.S. air bases in Iraq. But we'll have to see. Uh, <laughs> there's also a little bit of uh, official activity, if you want to call it that, Exchange Stabilization Fund. They would have a big excuse now to intervene in the markets. Will they be able to keep this uh, going? Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, we just have to wait and see and see how. Uh, the geopolitical situation evolves. Uh, currencies, uh, sterling is up slightly at 131.45, has been down as low as 131. Uh, the euro is unchanged, 111.50. Um, dollar is uh, unchanged against the Japanese yen at 108.42. Uh, and the dollar is down slightly against the Chinese yuan at 693.80. Crude oil, uh, WTI got up as high as 65.48. Uh, so, and it's now at 63.08. It's still up 1%. But uh, yeah, a huge spike in crude oil. Brent got up to 71.12. Uh, it's now at 68.77. Still up 1%. So by the time uh, this video uh is edited and published, <laughs> the markets might be completely different. 
that's how things are moving at the moment. Let's finish the markets off. Look at the bond market. That's been very volatile as well. Right now, the 10-year yield is down four basis points at 178. It's been uh, down as much uh, as 12 basis points, which is huge. That, that was the market that I used to work in, the bond markets uh, in the city. So I know 12 basis points is a lot. It got down to 170. So now let's look at the very long term technical picture for gold and why I think it's not like 1980 to 2000 when gold was in a 20 year bear market. Uh, so I'll show you the chart. This is a chart from barchart.com. So you can see here that's a monthly chart. I did a line chart because a uh, bar chart gets too messy. This is uh, easier to see. You can see here uh, in January 1980, gold topped. Um, and then that was the top around 880.750. And uh, from that point on until 1982, it uh, corrected and bottomed, tried to rise again uh, above 500. Failed around 1983, went down again, made a new low, as you can see, uh, and then towards 1980, end of 1987, so seven years later, it tried to make a new high and wasn't successful. Not new high, as you can see there. So after that, there's capitulation, long-term capitulation in gold, languished for the next 12 years uh, up until around 2000, 99, 2000, when it bottomed at 252. So let's look at the uh, the 21st century bull market uh, as opposed to the 1970s bull market. Uh, and you can see we topped above 1900. Uh, the prices here are, are not uh, uh, indicative of that because it's a uh, monthly closing prices but this will suffice and see gold corrected much like it did uh, in 1980 uh, dropped all the way to 1045 in December of 2015 uh, just like it did uh, drop uh, in uh, 1982 there made a low in 82 made a low in uh, 2015 rallied back just like it rallied uh, from 82 to 83 there and tested 500. We tested 1375 and we, we've had a, a few tests of this 1375, but the last time we did that uh, was end of May last year, but it broke through. So it, it made a new high, unlike in the 80s. In 1988, it wasn't able to make a new high. So now we've made a new high, and I think uh, technically it's looking very good. So what's going to be the next signal that we are on to uh, a real uh, exciting bull market and that the bull market of the 21st century uh, is not over yet, that the the move from 2011 to 2015 was just a correction. Well, we need to break the uh, all-time high at 1921. That's gonna prove that. Uh, and I think we are on our way, way to, uh, to doing that. Uh, I think I don't like to mention people, other people, other analysts or economists, but I think Harry Dent is gonna be proven wrong. I think we're gonna make uh, another new high uh, and go a lot higher than 1921. I'm not I'm not forecasting when. Uh, I think we'll do that uh, before we go back to seven 700. If we ever go back to 700 under the current uh, monetary system. So that's the technical picture. That's why I think uh, the market is very encouraging. Of course, in markets and in life, nothing is certain. But uh, the probabilities look very good, in my opinion. So what about the fundamental reasons? Uh, well, there's a very interesting uh, little book called A Pocketbook of Gold, A Survival Manual for Monetary Mayhem. 
by James Sinclair and Peter Carlin. Uh, I'm not sure where you can get this book. I bought it off the JS Mindset website, jsmindset.com, which is Jim Sinclair's website. Here's the little book. Bought it years ago. You might be able to find it on eBay or elsewhere. But they talk about what gold uh, reflects. Um, so I'm going to go through the table, table of contents. It says, Chapter 1, Gold is Insurance. Uh, gold allows you to be your own central bank. Gold bypasses government. Gold does not expose you to counterparty risk. Gold cannot be produced ad infinitum. Um, and so on. But uh, another interesting uh, characteristic they talk about is that gold is a barometer of fear and confidence, not inflation. Uh, yeah, and gold is a barometer as well of how well the central bankers are doing in terms of managing their monetary system. That's one of the reasons why the dollar did well in the 80s and 90s versus gold. That's why gold was in the bear market because Paul Volcker came in, uh, kind of uh, killed high inflation by allowing interest rates to rise in uh, 1980, 1981. Uh, Greenspan, uh, well, you can argue with that, but uh, did a good job <laughs> according to the market, according to uh, gold uh, and how gold performed. Uh, it gave a vote of confidence to the Federal Reserve. And that's why the price of gold languished from 1980 to 2000. But I think what uh, gold, the price of gold is telling us now and has been telling us is that the uh, central bankers are not doing a good job, that they're actually inflating the system, even though they tell us uh, we have a low inflation problem. So what happened uh, between 2011 and 2015 when gold was in a bear market? Well, I think uh, it was a vote of confidence that the central bankers had averted uh, an even bigger crisis after the 08 crisis and the European sovereign debt crisis. But now, why is it going back up? I think it's because people are coming to the realization that central bankers have failed. They've had to reinstate all the QE. Uh, they've had to cut rates again, uh, the Fed and the ECB. And even the central bankers now are admitting that uh, they've got uh, no ammunition left. And <laughs> that's not me saying this. This came out yesterday in the FT. Uh, they've had a kind of an interview with Mark Carney, uh, governor of the Bank of England, who's leaving soon. Uh, I'm not like praising him or anything. I'm just stating what he said here. Central banks running low on ways to fight recession, warns Mark Carney. Exclusive Bank of England governor sees threat of liquidity trap and need for fresh monetary tools. So I'll go quickly through this. It says the global economy is heading towards a liquidity trap that would undermine central banks' efforts to avoid a future recession. So uh, he thinks central banks will not succeed in the next recession. And we all know that recessions happened. Uh, the business or credit cycle has not been uh, abolished and never will. According to Mark Carney, governor of the Bank of England, in a wide-ranging interview with the FT, the outgoing governor warned that central banks were running out of the ammunition needed to combat a downturn. Uh, and this is his quote, It's generally true that there is much less ammunition for all the major central banks than they previously had. And I'm of the opinion that this situation will persist for some time. And he continues, uh, he says, if there were to be a deeper downturn that requires more stimulus than a conventional recession, then it's not clear that monetary policy would have sufficient space. So there you go. Even Mark Carney admitting that central bankers or central banks are failing. So what I'm trying to say here is that, yes, <laughs> uh, 
the situation in the Middle East, in Iran, Iraq, has triggered a little bit of a move in gold, but uh, the underlying reason for gold actually uh, going up or the fiat currencies going down is the monetary reason, the central banks losing control of the system. Uh, and you saw the technical reasons as well that I showed you looking very good. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Uh, please share this video far and wide as well, it helps. And you can also follow me on Twitter, BitChute, DTube, and Steemit. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.